Okay, I guess I need to turn the monitor off. And hello, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to tell you about part two of my pregnancy story. So actually, part one was received really well. So I think I left off, I was told that I, I couldn't eat after a certain period of time, which now thinking about it, I didn't eat for like a full day and a half because I stopped around like six or something and then couldn't eat until lunch a day after the babies were born. The doctor told me that my appointment was at three and at three o'clock I was waiting. Like I was supposed to be in the delivery room or like, you know, taking down to the surgery room and at three o'clock he was not there. Leading up to that time I was getting really nervous because all the research that I researched was about the spinal tap or the epidural and that freaked me out more than just having a surgery getting cut open. That spinal tap scared me so bad. So at three o'clock, I was like, where are you? Because I was anticipating how painful it was going to be on um, the spinal tap, not the C-section. So around like 3.30, the doctor like strolls in. I'm like, okay, you ready? And I'm like, yes, I've been ready for 30 minutes. Like, so they put me into the surgery gown and they put me into a wheelchair. Raj wasn't allowed to be with me in the operating room so I had to say goodbye to him on that floor and I was so sad I wish you know someone could be there you know, and you know see the babies when they're de delivered but no and I went into the elevator and went down to the floor and the nurse that I was with was the nurse that was really really friendly to me and she didn't speak much English but she would try our hardest um, so she was really nice, and thank God that she's the one that came with me. We go into the surgery room, and if anyone ever gone into a surgery room, like, awake, it's scary. Like, everything's, like, silver and, like, clean and sanitized and just, like, getting locked up. You know, it's just, like, nothing on the walls and just, like, very plain. So I get rolled into the operating room, and so it's three doctors, and they all spoke English, and there was, like, maybe two or three nurses there. And I was told that I need to stay still when they put in the spinal tap, the epidural, to numb my body. They're like, you can't move. This could, like, could be paralyzed. But again, I had done research on C-sections and everyone was saying how painful that part of the process was. Like, getting the epidural into your spine. So I started crying. I was shaking, I guess. One of the doctors had to, like, hold me, like, cuddle, so I would stop shaking. And I felt them wipe my back, like, with the sanitizing stuff and then it was a pause and I'm still crying and like being cuddled by a doctor and then I feel them wipe my back again and they're like okay done I was like what and apparently like the second time they cleaned my back but it was her putting the like the spinal tap in with epidurals so I definitely did not feel anything it felt so silly because I was telling Raj how scared I was I was telling my mom how scared I was a doctor had to cuddle me to stop me from shaking this c-section is so scary they like strap your arms down but if it's your first c-section you're like what the hell are they doing they like strap your arms down i don't know so you don't touch your stomach i have no clue who knows what they do with your legs and and then they put like a curtain up so i can't see like what's happening time for the surgery and the doctor tells me that it's you know i'm just gonna feel pressure and like pooling and stuff like that i'm not gonna get that graphic in this but basically like what it felt like was that like if you're wearing like really really tight pants and then you take your pants off you're like <sighs> And I'm guessing that's when they like did the incision. And then yeah, like then they had to pull and push the babies out. And uh, the doctor pulls out the first baby, and I hear crying and all that stuff. And he's like, "Oh, baby!" But he didn't tell me if it was a boy and a girl. Give me, you know, pass the baby off to the nurses so they can suck all the gross stuff out of their face. Then you know, more pushing, pulling, and then I feel the second baby come out. And um, he's like, "Oh, this is a boy." One of the doctors, she comes up to me. I was like, "Well, can you please tell me?" the gender of the baby she's like you have a boy and a girl and I was like oh, yay she's like oh they look healthy you know the nurse are just cleaning them up and then yeah like a minute later they brought me Zoe first like it was just so cute they're all like wrinkly they look like old people and then they brought me Nehemiah and you know Nehemiah started crying a little bit they were like okay we're gonna take the baby upstairs uh, while you finish getting stitched back and yeah so there was a clock inside the room so I could see that I had like 30 I was in the operating room 30 minutes while they like stick me all up and uh so then after that they rolled me upstairs and Raj like when the babies were um sent away they were sent up to the nursery and Raj was able to like touch them and, and hug them they bring me up to the nursery so I can see the babies and they were asleep they wheeled me into the room and then in Japan like if you have a c-section you're in the hospital for 10 days I stayed in the room that with the women who 
who are about to have babies and because again I'm numb for like another hour or so so they brought me my babies but like they didn't keep them in the room for a long time they would come and like take them away and like they would bring them back when they needed to be fed I was not afraid that someone was going to take my baby because they were the only like black babies in the hospital and then Roz would go to the nursery sometimes for the first night I slept by myself they kept the baby in the room again because I'm numb and then when in Japan their painkillers are not strong once I were able to feel my limbs and everything again then I felt the pain actually the, the incision was still kind of numb but I just felt like pain like internally and you know they would give me medicine but that was nothing and Raj had to like beg the nurses to like give me more medicine because they you know just, just Japanese medicine is not as strong their painkillers aren't that strong thank god that I was able to spend the night by myself and not with the babies because I don't know how they have be able to handle newborn babies and have like weak ass or weak weak pain medicine then after that probably because i because i had my c-section and i had twins they the first night they gave me nehemiah like for that full day they would have nehemiah and the next day zoe and then um but still i still i wouldn't have them for the night because i couldn't get up really to pee or anything like that um on the third day is when i walked then they forced me to walk around the the halls and after that I, I was moved into like the room with all the other moms and their babies when I was moved into there that's when they brought me both babies and I had both babies to stay with me and so feeding and all that stuff like Nehemiah was like was not feeding well and like they, they went in Japan they give you like boob massage to like get the milk going or something like that so every morning they would come in and, like massage my boobs <laughs> it was really weird Nehemiah just wasn't like hungry it wasn't like you know like the nurse had to like like hold his head and like force him to drink and i'm just like sitting there like ah, what do i do so it was really hard to get him to eat looking at him now you would be like what because he's like a little chubby round baby but when he was a little tiny newborn baby he did not want to eat zoe she was like yeah i'm hungry let's eat and it's funny because now she's like super skinny and she doesn't want to eat anything um, not super skinny, but she's just like a slim baby it's too busy doing other things than to eat So it was funny because they like kind of switched Yeah, so again on the 10th day we left and they kind of kick you out like they're like, oh, it's 12 uh, We this room's already booked for someone else. Can you please get out because Raj had to go downstairs to get the taxi and So he's downstairs getting the taxi and then like the nurses are like Okay, bye. <laughs> Raj comes back up, you know, we say goodbye to the nurses and then we leave. We're at the elevator and I just start crying and I'm like, we have to go back. I need to tell the nurses something. The nurses are having like a meeting. All the nurses, like every single nurse that I've seen for the past three weeks, they're like all having this meeting at the same time. So it's like a perfect opportunity. And Raj was my translator and I just was like, thank you so much for everything that you did. I'm sorry I don't speak that much Japanese. But thank you so much for trying so hard to like, teach me Japanese. And I was like crying and one of the nurses, the, the, this nice nurse, the nurse that was there in the operating room, she came by and she like actually walked us all the way out to the taxi. I'm crying the whole way now. We get in the taxi, I'm still crying. We get into the apartment, we put the babies in their cribs and I'm crying. I'm, I'm laying on the bed crying and Raj is like stop crying and I'm like I can't stop crying and I'm laying on the bed just crying and like Raj is like just go to sleep and I can't go to sleep and luckily I only cried for like an hour or two and yeah so <laughs> I don't know if that like makes anything sound better or worse but that was just my experience in Japan so yeah so now they're 10 months and you know doing great so far no one's missing any limbs or blind or anything actually let me just let me show you the babies <laughs> yeah so Nehemiah hey hello hello he can see himself so that's why he's really excited Oh my goodness gracious, Nehemiah! Yeah, definitely 10 months old! This is Zoe! Zoe's doing great! Yay! <laughs> she has a runny nose all the time, but we try to get those boogers! That doesn't always work though, because someone doesn't like their nose being liked. Mommy sometimes get punched in the face. She's like, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for um, watching. Any questions that you might have, any, you know, um, questions or any concerns or anything like that that you want to make a video about, just leave it in the comments below. And that's it. Say bye-bye, Zoe.
yeah bye bye thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it please subscribe so you can watch more episodes of traveling with twins and also any other bonus video that i might film and also you can follow me on instagram and on snapchat so you can see daily updates of what we're doing when we're not traveling and i will see you later bye yeah yeah <laughs>